I gotta talk to the man right now. Cliff Buchanan. Who's this? Mike Rivers, the new sports reporter, Mr. Abbott Hall. Okay, look, I'll talk for myself, all right? Now, look, Mr. Buchanan, I think it's about time you came down out of your ivory tower and dealt with the real world for a change, okay? Because I'll tell you something. If this is the way you're going to run this rag, well, I'll just take well, my story and... Turn. Hey, wait a minute. I, don't I plan said... To... Hold it. Tina, I think we're just about wrapped up here. What do you think? I'll wait to talk to Richard later. Okay, shoot. Briggs just told me you gave the racetrack story to the news desk. That's right. Who should I have given it to? The classifieds? What about the, the, the sports desk where it belongs? The sports desk? This is a major news item. I need a top investigative report. So what am I, huh? What do you think I do? Spend all my time doing high school sports and personality profiles? Hey, I'll tell you something. I'm a reporter, okay, in every sense of the word. I got the scar to prove it, right? And I'll tell you something else. I know the track inside out, right? I know the jockeys. I know the, the grooms. I know the owners. I know whole that backs. That doesn't track. mean that you cover news stories. Hey, it's my beat. Mike, have you ever handled anything like this for the banner before? <sighs> no, I haven't. Hey, look, look. I got a personal stake in this, okay? Charlie was a friend of mine. Her death was no accident. Look, I'm just the guy to run the story down. Wait, what, what, are you, what are you trying to say? I'm telling you, the whole thing was a setup. Hey, Charlie was the best. She was a pro. You know that. I mean, she's been out of worse jams than that. That other jockey had no business pulling phrenology in a bumper like that. She didn't have a chance. What kind of proof you got? Hey, look, I got plenty of leads, okay? Come on. All you got to do is let me run with a thing. Leads. I said proof, Mike. No go. Come on. What are you going to do? Just let it slide? No, I am not going to let it slide. I'm going to put another reporter on it and have him check it out. Come on, come on, come on. That's not fair. No one said it was fair, but it's good journalism. Hey, what... I need a reporter who will go out there with questions, Mike, not answers. Hey, questions. hey, hey, you'll get the truth from me. I'll report it either way. No, you won't. Now, my decision stands, Mike. Okay, you just hang on here, because I got something I'm going to show you that's going to make you change your mind. Okay, here you go. This is what I'm talking about. Now you're going to believe me. This is Mike Rivers, one of my sports reporters. He happens to share some of your uh, suspicions. You probably know me as Bud Van Dyke. Yeah, yeah, you and Lucky Opal. Yeah. Charlie wrote for you. Uh, Mike's wanting me to let him cover the story, Brad. So what, we got a deal or what? <laughs> I'm investigating some funny business at the track for a friend, but I think I'm in over my head. Need your advice, Charlie. And that's the last I ever heard of. Do you know her well? Yeah, I knew her well. We were friends for years. I just wish I could get my hands on a clown that she was trying to help out. And yeah, she'd be still be alive today. Yeah. Well, you know who I'm talking about? You're looking at him. If I hadn't told Charlie my suspicions about Baron, this never would have happened. I'm gonna nail that guy. If you want to work with me, fine. Yeah, you got it. No. I don't want you getting personally involved. Come on, what about the note? The note only proves my point. You, we're messing with dynamite here. You're too close to this, you'd blow it. All right, you're right. But there's no reason why we can't work in the background. No. Yeah, okay, okay, maybe, huh? But see, let me, let me file the story once we get all the information. I in. said huh? no. Why don't you and I sit down and put our heads together and see what we can come up with, all right? Brad, I don't want Mike getting personally involved. Can I buy you a cup of coffee? Yeah, yeah. How about that? You fellas heard what I said. Hey, what's a cup of coffee, huh? You heard me. Hi, Brad. Oh, what's up? Hey, we're just uh, running out of story. Right. Relax, boss. I'm not here to push a story. I just, uh, well, I was hoping maybe you could uh, work out a shift change for me. A shift change? Why? What's up? Well, with all the, uh, with all the night games and the baseball schedule, I figured I should be working nice, too, if it's okay with you. Baseball? Yeah. Since when did you cover baseball? Well, I was thinking that, you know, I should... I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that if you work nights, you'll have your days free to snoop around the track. Oh, I'm telling you. And don't I... lie to me. Request denied. So what, I'm just supposed to accept your decision? Is that it? Look, Mike, I know how you feel about losing a friend. Well, then just, why don't you just let me tackle the story my own way, huh? 
Look, I just, I just want to get the guys who killed Charlie. Those guys could be professionals. Now, if they're into doping horses and killing jockeys, you think they're going to back off when it comes to taking care of you? Look, look, Clint, I'll be careful, Clint, okay? I'm just not about to forget what they did to her. You know what you remind me of? Yeah, yeah, you have your typical cub reporter or something. Yeah, a cub reporter named Clint Buchanan. I've already got a news reporter covering the racetrack story. Great. But the night shift is yours. You mean that? Yes, I mean it. Uh, probably nuts, but yes, I mean it. Hey, Clint, you're not going to look great. I hope not, Mike. For both our sakes. So Good night. Nice. Oh, Mike, Hi. come on in. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Mike. Okay, Clint, I got the uh, story on the Ronson injury. Yeah. Interviewed him last night at the hospital, exclusively, of course. Really? Terrific. How is it? It's going to be lost for the season. Oh, no. Well, there's a pennant. Baseball, right? Very good, dear. <laughs> oh, uh, Clint, uh, I know you meant next week about me starting working nights because I have my, so I can have my days free for uh, the investigation, but uh, you got to let me cover the track this afternoon. Mike, I thought we had already been through this. Come on, Clint, this is on the up and up. You know whose horse is running tomorrow. Hey, every other reporter's gonna be uh, covering that now. Come on. Mike, I don't want your personal investigation crossing with official banner reporting. Yeah, but look, Clint. Hey, do you mind if we talk about this in private? Sorry, uh, this is Cord Roberts, a new photographer for the banner. Mike Rivers, Cord. How you doing, Mike? Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. read your stuff in the sports section. Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you too, but, uh, do you mind if I talk to the boss in private here? Wait a minute. Five minutes. The subject is closed. I want the regular track reporter to cover his normal business. Okay? Now, if you go to the track, you go on your own time. Now, do you have that? Wait a minute. Yes. Yeah, Briggs. All right, fine. Uh, sweetheart, they need us at the city desk. You guys feel free to stick around, get acquainted in the right place right. at the right time. I was standing there in the airport, and all of a sudden, Cassie screams, Stop him, he's got a gun. So I took a picture. <sighs> Boy, sure beat standing in line at the personnel office hustling a job like I had to do. Yeah, well, you've done all right for yourself. You're working in the sports department, right? Yeah. You know, I don't know if, what I'd have done if I hadn't got this job. I've been in sports my whole life, you know? Played baseball, basketball, <laughs> even paid my way through school. Really? Hey, any pro teams interested in you? You kidding me? They're more interested in me than I was in them. But, uh, well, you know, I could keep my eye on the ball. It's just that I, I figured I should exercise my brain instead, you know? Mm. Besides, sports writers last longer than players. Anyway, I, uh, got to take care of this fine body you see standing here. <laughs> hey, you mentioned something before about some horses. Uh, said you could use my help? Yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine was killed at the track. Jockey. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that, uh... Some kind of accident? No, no, it was no accident. It was murder. Are you kidding me? No. Oh. She was, uh, Charlie, that's her name. She was riding uh -huh. for, uh, Brad, for Brad Vernon, a, a horse called Lucky Opal. Yeah? Favorite to win, out in front, and Bart Barron's horse bumped her. She, she knocked her off her horse, and, uh, and she, uh, broke her neck and died in the hospital. And you think this, this bump was intentional? No, huh? I know it was intentional. Look, I, I, I've been investigating the possibility that horses are being drugged down at the track, and in particular, Bart Barron's horse. Yeah, yeah, but why Barron, huh? Because Barron's got some, a pharmaceutical company, okay? He could be whipping up some wonder drug that can't be detected. Oh. Yeah, and so Brad Vernon knows about this, but he can't get next to him, right? Because Bart knows that he's on to him. But, I mean, the guy seems to like me. I, I got to see him uh, this afternoon sometime about a press agent job or something. Does that mean you're going to be leaving your job here at the Banner? No, no, no. I'm going I'm to stay here and do that part-time. That way I can get inside with Baron. I tell you, sounds pretty risky to me. Nah, no, nah, I'm not scared of him. He killed my friend Charlie. Hey, look, I got to do this. I got no choice. I could really use your help, man. I, I don't know one end of a horse from another. You know, it's like <laughs> I see him running and You're I... You're a city boy. Oh, is it show? So what do you think? Can you give me a hand? Well, I tell you. I don't like to hear about anybody messing with good horse flesh. And when you put murder on top of that, you've got to count me in. Man, I was hoping you'd say that. I'll tell you what, I'll meet you at the Vernon and say around three. That way I've, uh, 
I'll have had a chance to talk to Barron, so I'll have more facts for you. Sounds good to me, pal. So can I buy you a drink? Yeah, sure, fine. Now, come on, tell me how your meeting went with Barron. Uh, terrific. You know, we're not gonna get a seat in this place. Anyway, he offered me a job as a press agent, undercover. Oh, and I suppose that idea just popped right into his head, all on his lonesome, huh? Well, I don't know. I might have, uh, come up in a previous conversation. You sure he doesn't know what you're doing? No. No, I don't think so, you know, because guys like that with that kind of ambition, they kind of sense or, or maybe smell ambition in other people. All he did was ask me whether or not I was legit. And are you? Yeah. Squeaky clean, brother. Well, I hope that doesn't bother him. You know, Baron may be looking for somebody with a little dirt in their background. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought about that. No, 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 I can't see that, man. A guy like that, I mean, he's up to an, uh, his eyebrows in it. He probably wants somebody out front who's clean. Yeah, well, I hope so. You just be careful, because he could be stringing you up when you think you're stringing him. Yeah, gotcha. Anyway, we're not gonna get a drink in this place. I got an idea. I'll take you down to Elmo's. It's the hottest club in town, okay? Sounds fine to me. So, uh... Ah, uh, jeez. Okay, tell you what. I'm gonna meet you there, because I gotta go back to the banner and run that stuff on, uh, on, uh... Uh, Baron. Right. Well, you just point me in the right direction, okay? All you gotta do is hop in the cab and say Elmo.